Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. This week's scrapbook layout is slightly different. So this is going to be a picture of my, well I'm scrapbooking a picture of my nan, her mum and her dad. So my great grandparents and my nanny. So this is a gift for my nan, which she's now had. This was given to her for Christmas and she adored it. So I've made quite a few gifts for my nan this year. Um, I wanted to do more of a homemade Christmas. And I'm glad I did because I thoroughly enjoyed it. So the whole process is very similar to a normal scrapbook layout. So I'm just going through these gorgeous v &A papers from Trim Craft and just pulling out papers that I think will work well with the photo. And I'm trying to kind of take my nan back to that moment in time, I guess, that era, which is the 1940s. So we think my nan in this picture is probably around 10 she could be nine she could be 11 but she's around that kind of age and she was born in the mid 30s so i couldn't be exactly sure but it's the mid 40s that we think but i'm i end up just in the title i just put in the 1940s for this one so i have brought these frames from the works now these were seven pound these wooden frames and they had a plastic acetate on the front but actually i removed that and i wanted it to just be an open frame so I'm just going along at the minute. I'm just really playing around, looking at, you know, measuring the paper because although it's a 12 by 12 frame, I had to take a little bit off the paper, which you can see I'm doing here. I think it ended up coming down to maybe about 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And then I just start kind of layering up on top of that. So it's a little bit smaller in terms of the, the actual layout, but the whole piece is, is 12 by 12. So the papers, that, like I said, this v &A, collection is perfect for obviously what I wanted to do because they are vintage prints and patterns and um, I, yeah I just as soon as I saw them I thought this is what I'm going to do with it so I do a lot of distressing and a lot of this is a very vintage looking layout so I'm using my little kind of distress tool there to just fray up all of the edges which again you'll see more of this in the photos so I've got all of my v &A collection here and I'm just bringing everything out some I, I do use pretty much everything I think there's maybe only a couple of bits that I didn't end up putting into the layout but everything pretty much does get used and I'm pulling in little trinkets um, I've got tiny little cup and saucer got a little cameo kind of pendant tiny little embellishments there's just so much stuff so it's just really pulling out and gathering everything that i needed or i would think i was going to use in this layout um from this little box here you can see this just it's just full of all sorts of just bits you know you might find something i just kind of throw it in that box so again i'm just layering up this is another so i end up i'm just looking at it now in front of me so i do this greeny kind of color is the one that stays on the top and then I've got that other one that I just kind of set back behind and then there's this kind of I guess rosy kind of pink one which is that one you can see at the back which is the biggest there and again I'm just going to distress these I've already done the two but you can see that I'm just distressing up that other one as well and I also end up adding a little bit of ink to these as well I'm not sure if that gets shown or not you can see the ink just to the right there and you can see now how I'm starting to layer them up. Now, the reason I done that one, which you think probably, oh God, that's a waste. You can hardly see anything, but I'm going to start exposing parts of it. I wanted to have a look of kind of worn wallpaper or like peeling wallpaper. So this wallpaper is meant to look like it's coming off and then revealing what's underneath. So this is my nail file and this is what I like to use this for. And I'm literally rubbing the, the top of that paper until I go through to the white core and then break through. So you start to reveal that other paper underneath. And it's a really lovely way, which you can see now, you get a really natural distressed look in your paper, which looks like that kind of worn you know, wallpaper look. So I'm just going over different parts of that paper and you can probably see there, oh, I do show you the, the um, it was the burlap distressed ink that I use here. But you can see where I've kind of distressed other parts of that paper as well. It's a little bit greener in areas. That was from this. So I'm just going around now and you'll start to see me really kind of dirty up this page because I use the distress ink throughout the rest of the, the layout really. I even use it on in the embellishments, um, the pegs, the bunting, everything else you'll see me use. If you don't see it being done, it has been done. I've just edited it out. But you'll see here, I'm just going around and really starting to work in that burlap coloured distressed ink, which was, it was really nice. It's got more of a slightly greeny browny kind of tone to it. 
So there I'm just rolling that paper, really breaking down the fibres. You can see that. You'll see that really well in the photos at the end. But I'm just rolling the paper again just to look like that, that rolled kind of wallpaper look. So now I'm going to stick that whole piece down. So you can see there where I've just, just stressed and gone right the way through that one section. You know, you can do that all the way over. It looks really good as well. But I just wanted it towards the top left because that's all you're actually really going to see once the rest of that paper, you know, does get covered really with the photo and everything else. So that's that bit's done. So I'm really, really pleased. Now I'm bringing in the photo and starting to have a little bit of a play around, checking that that's right. Because the photos are five by seven, so it's much, much bigger than I would usually use. But it's all about that photo. So yeah, it's slightly, it's, it's a mixed media project as opposed to a real, you know, normal scrapbook layout. So just dirty that up a bit more. And now I'm going to start layering up the photo. So I do back it onto some cardstock and then I start distressing it all up because this is it's quite a sepia colour photo. So I didn't want it, that white that you see I do use, but it does get distressed with the, the ink again and stuff. So I went and kind of um, distressed the corner of that photo just a little bit and I used the nail file, not too much. I just kind of scratched it a little bit, but it's already a very old grainy photo. So I didn't want to do too much to it. And you can see now I'm just using my, again, just stressed ink. I didn't want any white. I don't want you to see a real crisp white because that's not what you see in the photo. It's more of a cream, like I said, colour. So you can see now I'm just going in and just messing all that up and you can see the color a bit more there you can see it's like a greeny brown so it was really nice to use with this one and again just bringing in my distressing tool there and again I go over now because all the fibers have been exposed and just mess that up a bit more and you again you'll see this in the photos you'll see that in a bit more detail so again just get that all stuck down and start to layer up everything now and slowly start to kind of bring everything in and um, you know start to bring it together. So this was the eight by eight pack that I'm using. And again, just deciding I wanted quite a pinky color to frame the photo because of the green and light kind of creamy colored, you know, wallpaper, I guess I'll keep calling that. So you know what I'm talking about. So this pink here that I'm going to stick it on really did kind of lift. You can see now just, it really did kind of lift and frame that photo nicely. So again, just bringing in that little tool just to go around and distress the edges. And again, I get them inked up and then start to stick it down. So I have got these very old music sheets and um, they're great for, again, when you're doing mixed media or vintage layouts or projects, great for, you know, covering albums or boxes and things like that. So I'm just going in here and just kind of randomly tearing them up. And I want to start layering different parts of the kind of music paper behind the photo. Now the reason I brought in the music paper is my nan loves music, she loves to dance. Whenever music comes on, you know, especially if it's, you know, older music, it always takes her back to that moment and she she does. If there's a party, my nan is eager and the first one up to dance. So I wanted to to pull in parts of her personality into this layout. So you can see now how that again that I just think that looks really really nice and start to kind of play around. Again as always I'm not sticking anything down so I'm treating it just as a normal scrapbook layout until I'm 100%. So even now it's still not stuck down. I'm just bringing in other bits and pieces and just playing around. So these are a couple of wooden hearts that I've got and I'm just distressing them up rubbing my fingers over them, just really kind of, you know, messing it up. And they end up going on the frame itself, which you'll see later. So now I've got this huge, great big doily, but it's way too white, way too perfect. <laughs> so I'm again using that same distress ink and just going in now and really messing this up. I rip it, I screw it up and um, I was going to get tea stain it as well, but I thought I'm just going to keep it with this, this same distressed ink here. So yeah, I wasn't careful with this at all. I wanted to obviously keep a little bit of the pattern, but bearing in mind, a lot of it was going to get covered with the photo and everything else. But you can see there when I rip it up and then distress it, you get to see all the crease marks and stuff. So now I'm going to start placing that. That goes down first and then I start to layer up the music kind of behind that. And um, yeah, just keep playing around until I'm kind of happy with where I'm going to put everything. So I don't actually know what song this is. There was nothing actually wrote on it. So it's just lots of, I think I picked it up from a charity shop. So um, again, it was already ripped out of a book. It was just kind of scrap pieces, but they're, they're perfect for doing these kind of projects. So yeah, I wanted to make sure you get enough of the doily, enough of the music, still, you know, not taking anything away from the photo itself. 
So another thing my nan loves is bling. So she loves a bit of sparkle and shine. So I'm using the Cosmic Shimmer Paste and this is the gold. And I'm just, again, knowing that the photo and what that's kind of, you know, going to be mostly covered. I just wanted little bits of this gold just peeking out. So, yeah, most of that does get covered. I, did, I didn't want there to be loads, but just enough. So you can see now how, how shiny that is. But see, it just kind of peeks through. And there's some off to the left hand side where that really distressed corner is. And you can see it down the right hand side near where my nan is and where my finger is. You can see it all there. So again, it wasn't meant to be in your face glittery, but just nice bits of sparkle because this is going to go up on her wall. And, you know, I just want I thought that'd be nice to shine. So now I'm just using my glue and just kind of sticking that down. I didn't stick everything down because the frame is set back. I can have a lot of dimension in this layout, tons of dimension. So lots of the paper isn't stuck down right to the edges. I didn't want that. I want it to be lifted up and I wanted it to be really 3D. So I've just popped some 3D foam on the photo and now I'm going to stick that down and keep it dead straight, but just down towards that bottom left hand side. I'm um, sorry bottom right hand side of the 12 by 12 papers there so now before I start working on the actual layout I'm going to start decorating the frame because I'm going to then finish decorating it in the frame because it helped me better with it being in the frame for me to get all the proportions right so I wanted to decorate the four inside sides of that frame so I'm cutting these strips here it was just over an inch I think it's about an inch and one eighth and I'm using this really nice textured paper from the pack. And again, I thought it looked like a wallpaper print. So you can see that I've already done the three other sides. And you just see me put the last one in there, just sticking that down along the sides. And um, until you look at it closely, I guess you wouldn't really see that so much. But you can just see it there when I lift it up. So now I'm going to start playing with the frame a bit more. And then I end up fixing it into that actual frame itself because like I said it makes it much much easier for me to start adding bits to it and knowing that it's going to fit so you can see me there just popping it in the back the back all gets sealed I cover that all up as well but now you can see how that kind of looks inside the frame itself and then I can start adding everything to it so I'm already pulling in bits and pieces there again nothing is going to be stuck down yet but I wanted to to get the title first for this one so I'd keep it very simple and just go for mum and dad because it's my mum's, my mum's, my it's my nan's mum and dad. She doesn't have, she has hundreds of photos. She doesn't have any albums though. And she doesn't really have something that really would tell anybody that that's her parents. So I wanted to have something up. Obviously us as family know that they are her mum and dad, but I just thought it would be really nice to have it up so that she sees it every day as well. So I'm using my favourite wood chip um cardboard I guess colored um, letters but they were too dull and too boring so I'm using my distressed crayons so I'll just make sure I get the right one there distressed crayons by Tim Holtz and I've just gone over them and then I'm just rubbing the it's kind of like a wax a wax crayon and it's just a very very um you know pigment uh, crayon I guess so I'm just rubbing that all in. You can see just how quickly they've all changed now and they're much, much darker in colour and they look loads better because they would just look lost against that colour that I had. So now you can see I start to lay it out and it really does work much, much better on that background. And I just think it looks really, really nice. And again, when she opened this, she cried and it was just it was just lovely. It was just, again, I'm just I'm so pleased I done it. And again, very inexpensive to do for me. You know, so I've got all the supplies, but um, yeah, I just I loved it. So now I'm sticking them down. I've just used glossy accents just because that's what I had at hand and it dries nice and clear and it's very, very strong. Now, I also end up going over the letters with glossy accents, which I did do in a scrapbook layout called Happy Hour of me and my grandfather, my other grandfather. And you'll see that later on. So these are the really lovely paper flowers from the V&A collection. And they've got a really lovely gold um, kind of edge to them. So you can see now I start to build up this cluster in the corner with my hot glue gun. And you'll see there I'm adding in a tiny little teacup, tiny little saucer. I add a button, even the smallest flowers. You see the hearts there are being added. There's little embellishments, sequins, a butterfly, a cameo. Everything kind of just gets put into this this layout now and I'm just using my hot gun and just basically going through everything I had pulled out before that sat around me and just start layering it up. So the top right there, I'm just, these are wooden hearts and a wooden oval with butterflies on them. So Manan really likes butterflies. 
although nan loves any animal really to be fair she yeah nature and all that kind of stuff she loves so now i'm starting to work on another little cluster towards the top right of the frame so it's a very similar cluster to the bottom left but this one's just a little bit smaller on the top and now i am bringing in even more stuff so these are the stickers they're butterfly they're vintage stickers but there's a butterfly on each one which you can see i've already peeled off and they are sitting on how many butterflies to go for yeah two one is you'll see me there just molding it one is above the mum you see it there and then one is just on that bottom left cluster of the photo so this is what i mean now so i'm going over the mum and dad with the glossy accents so you just just basically just almost you know use it like a paintbrush and then once it dries it will dry clear and it looks really nice this is the bunting from the same collection. So this is the pack. You get loads, you get 60 of these little triangle buntings and you also get the rope as well to stick it all on. So I've just popped that along the top there. And that was just, the bunting was used obviously a lot when they would have street parties. And I just thought it would look really nice again and works perfectly obviously because it all matches, but it works great for this layout. These are the ribbon bows again from the same collection so i'm popping one at both ends of the bunting ribbon there just kind of reshaping them trimming them a little bit because i wanted them the tails were a bit too long so i've just shrunk them a, a tiny bit then i'm bringing in this is the nouveau drops oh the color's completely gone from me i've used it a few times now but again it's got a really nice vintage it's almost like a pearlescent you know it's got a nice greeny pearly kind of color to it so that gets added then i'm using the glossy accents with the sequins again from the same collection just to bring in more of a shine you'll see i've added a bow to the hearts in the bottom left along with a little metal bird cage um what else have i got going on there i've added the love with love which was one of the stickers from the pack the two the words to the left of my grandmother there as i hold up one says happiness and one says remember this always there's little sticky hearts, there's puffy stickers. Yeah, there's so much. But can you see now, you just get little hints of the glitter. You see the glitter on the flowers, see that bumblebee, bumblebee, that butterfly. See the heart there. There's just, it's just an absolutely beautiful layout. I really, really did love doing this. You're also seeing the photos. I've added a paper clip to the bottom right hand side of the frame. And on there it says Albert Clara Evelyn 1940s. So that's my great grandfather, my great grandmother and my nanny. And it was in the 1940s. So there's also a key hanging from that cluster. I've just noticed as well. I've got the word vintage amongst it. There's just lots of little things. And that's what my nan really enjoyed when she looked at this. She kept finding other little bits. Every time she looked at it, she'd find something new. And yeah, I'm just thoroughly pleased with it. So I just wanted to show you another way of maybe making a scrapbook. Some people have said to me they don't know what they will do with their scrapbook layouts. I keep mine all in a scrapbook album, but if you want to make one and give it as a gift, this is a perfect way to give this as a gift. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've inspired you and I'll be back again next week with another scrapbook layout. Thanks for watching. Bye.